Cool. What's going on, guys? G Code here by the athlete for the athlete. I got my guy, Donovan Williams, here. Appreciate Thanks, it, man. Sir. So, just so for people who don't know you, which, man, it can't be many people nowadays, <laughs> tell them who you are and, and, and who you are, man. Uh, my name is Donovan Williams. You know, I'm from Lincoln, Nebraska. Uh, I play basketball. And um, yeah, that's about it. Yeah, you know, I guess you used to play baseball too. We were just we were just talking here for about the first ten minutes, and this guy used to throw the heat, man. I used to throw heat, really Straight heat when I was a, when I was a pitcher. You said because how 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 fast you just said when you were throwing at twelve? I was throwing about 60, 65. That's crazy, 12. man. You know, baseball's my sport, man. Yeah, I did not know that. <laughs> uh, baseball's my sport, bro. I love basketball, but baseball's my sport. So, um, my biggest thing I want, my first thing I want to ask you right now is, what makes Donovan Williams successful, man? Uh, just motivation. From where? Just Why? Wa- Who? Just wow. waking up and, you know, seeing my mom go to work every day, yeah. 7 a.m., working her butt off until she's, you know, until she's worn out and tired at 8 a.m. at night. She comes, she drives to Omaha every day to work. Does she? So, oh, heck yeah. You know, just little stuff like that. Right. And um, obviously people that that I've lost that aren't here to do what I, what I, what I do. Mm-hmm. Um, some friends I've lost that don't have the opportunity to wake up and work out and play basketball. Right. So, you know, I just can't take it for granted. For, you seem uh, like you don't really take anything for granted. Not at all. Why is that? Um, you know, because I know how I know how quick it can be taken from me, right. especially after the leg injury. Um, you know, there's just not a time where I'll take anything for granted anymore. Did you before that? Uh, I I never I never really did. Right. But you know, just from perspective of not anymore. If I maybe I did a couple times, but not, right. I didn't notice it. But from now when it on, happened, you're probably like, oh shit, this is real. Yeah, it's real. Right. Yeah, for it's real. real. Well, and then what I love most about that is, I know for me, I get a lot of heat the way I think about this. I know my wife gives me a hard time, but I wake up every day and I'm like, well, actually, before I go to bed every night, I'm like, well, the next day, on our on her drive to work, she could die. Facts. And I'm like, man, like when I tell people that, like, that's a really weird way to think about that. It's very morbid. And I'm like, it's not morbid. It's the freaking truth. Facts. I mean, you, didn't, you never know. Never you know? know. And I think, what how, what do they say? They're like, you know, tomorrow's never promised or whatever. And it's true. Like, you know, I don't care how cliche that may seem. It's the truth, you know? Yeah. So, what are, so where do you get your motivation from? Do you read books? Do you listen to, watch YouTube? Um, you know, it's really just from the heart. Yeah. You know, I watched the, um, uh, it was a video of a guy on YouTube, and he was talking about, like, you know, all these players, they listen to all this hype music, and they watch some motivational videos before the game. I don't have to do that. Really? It just, I mean... It just comes natural. Yeah, it just comes natural. You know, some people, like, listen to music when they lift. I don't listen to music when I lift. Really? They it just, just go... Because the best the best motivation is from is from the inside. That mean, that, that's, Amen. you know, it means something if it comes from the inside. Right. You know? It's more, well, it's more powerful that way, yeah, too. I don't need anything to get me to work hard. Right. I don't need music to get me to work hard. Right. You have no idea how much that sets you apart from, because I know so many kids who they have to listen to a certain song or read a certain verse or whatever, which is, it's all great. You know, yeah. each, each person, but you know, I guess more power to you, man. Yeah. Everybody's different. Yeah. So you get a lot of, you get a lot of, I guess we'll call it a lot of hype for how vocal you are and stuff. Um, how do you feel about that? Um, I, uh, I think it's great because it's, it's the truth. Right. You know, um, I've always been like a good guy, whether you don't see me as a good guy or not. You know, what it comes down to is, is if you know me, then you know, you know what kind of guy I am. And if you don't, then you, whatever perception you have of me doesn't matter. Right. And that's what, what I, I don't understand about this at all is nobody has any idea what you go through. When you're off the court, when you're at home, when you're in your family, when you're in the gym, like they don't understand. So who, who in the right mind thinks they have the right to tell you, you know, to tell you wrong? You know, I, I really ask myself that every day. Yeah. I asked myself that this morning when really? I was in the shower. Right. Um, I was just like thinking like, what did I do to these people? Right. Nothing. You I'm haven't just, done I'm, anything. I'm just, <laughs> you, you put a tweet out. <laughs> I'm just, you know, I'm just being me. Uh, I, I mean, I'm just being me. Right. I think a lot of that, and, and we can, we don't have, I don't want to get into too much, but I think obviously the Nebraska faithful, when they see someone decommit from a school or whatever, you know, they're like, oh, well, he's not faithful. Well, why does that matter? Exactly. Because yeah. at the you end know? of the day, I'm doing what's best for me. Exactly. And that's all it's about, you know, and I think too many people are selfish in their own beliefs and what they want. And that, and even if it's at the expense of somebody else. Yeah. You know, sure. so tell, tell us, what are your workouts like? What do you eat? All that fun stuff. Mm, give me, uh, give me a daily routine of Donovan Williams. A daily routine, you know, on a weekday, obviously, um, I don't start school till about nine o'clock. Do you so, sleep in a little bit? Yeah, a little bit. Heck I mean, yeah, man. It, it kind of depends because I got therapy Monday and I got therapy Tuesday, Thursday, okay. 7 a.m. 
So on those days, I won't work out in the morning, but usually twice to maybe three times a week, if I'm feeling good, I'll get up at like 4.30, go to my gym, work out, um, you know, maybe go get something to eat from McDonald's or like Subway or something like that. Mm -hmm. Go to school. Um, I get out pretty early too, so I'll shoot around, go through some walkthrough stuff before practice. And I'll practice, and sometimes I'll go get shots up after. Kind of depends on how I'm feeling. So you, you got a, you got a pretty good routine. You know what you need to be. Yeah, yeah. How can an athlete who does not have a routine like that get more like you? Um, you just, I mean, you gotta try it. Right. You know, some people are different. You know, some people work out three times a day. Some people work out once a day. It kind of depends how productive you are. Right. I could, I could have a more productive workout in an hour than some people do in three hours. Right. And that's just because of the intensity of the workout and how hard I'm going. Seems like you, but you more so have a plan. Definitely. You know, when you wake up, you know what's gonna, you know what's gonna happen each, you know, at each workout. Mm -hmm. Things obviously might be adjusted, but you have an understanding of what's going to happen. For sure, because I know where I want to go. I know what the things I have to do to get there. Right. So, and I think that's one thing people lack is they don't know, you know. So, and as we're sitting here talking, I feel like you do a lot of you do a lot of self talk to yourself, and it seems like you almost have to, and yeah. with the with the environment we're in, with social media and all that stuff. What what how how do you find that because i know so many people struggle with that you know the people they're very negative by themselves or they might bring themselves down how do you, you go know, about that it really comes down to people that love you like my mom you know i can talk to my mom preach about it brother anything. preach it uh i can talk to my brother my dad my stepdad my sister right and they know they i mean they can see through me mm -hmm. you know they know what i'm going through they know if i if i'm in a bad mood or if i'm in a good mood or how i'm feeling so you know just them and Another person is, is not a person, but it's my dog. You know, sometimes. Hey, I just man, come I'll home. tell you right now, there's no one more faithful on this earth than a dog. No, I, I'm, I mean, I, that is the truth. You know, so funny story about that. I, I'm, I'm a big dog person. People know that. I had this guy tell me at this bar once, and he was like, I don't care who you are. You have a wife, you have your wife or your girlfriend or whatever, and the dog. And you throw them both in the trunk of your car for a whole hour. You open that trunk, wife goes out, she's yelling at you, you're screaming at you. Dog hops out, licking your face, loving you. Yeah, it, it's crazy. It's crazy it's how crazy. they are, man. You know, I mean, everybody, I know my dogs, you know, not the best dog ever. What kind of dog is it? It's a pit bull. Oh, heck yeah. yeah he's, he's a pit bull and a Boston Terrier mix. What's his name? Eli. Oh, man, there you I go. mean, and this dude, I mean, I'm talking last night when I got home from the game after we lost, he just like changed my whole mood. Is that crazy how that works, man? Literally. And it's just those, it's just those small things, man. Like I have, I'll have the shittiest day or the worst day ever. You come home and you know, even my, you know, my, my my wife might have a bad day too. We come home and dogs are jumping up and down crazy. It just changes yeah. the whole mood. Yeah. It's crazy how that yeah. works, man. I so they can live forever. Shout out to the dog lovers. Well, yeah. that's that's one thing that I've read. Like, from, you know, I don't want to get too biblical with it, but like, like, well, they're like, well, God puts them on earth for not as long as us because they love more than we do. That's a fact. You know. So, so obviously we got a lot of recruitment stuff going on with you. Mm -hmm. Um, how are you dealing with that? you you got, you got so much hype. Do you, do you make sure you try to tune out with social media? Do you try to be involved with it? How do you go about it? Um, you know, I, uh, before, you know, I was focused on a little bit too much, you know, when in reality, well, I, said, uh, I just feel like, cause almost, I feel like I have something to prove sometimes when I don't. Right. And sometimes, you know, athletes. It's all that pressure. Yeah. You know, athletes can get caught up in that. People say I'm not good enough. So I try to prove something when I don't have to, really. Mm -hmm. But now, you know, I realize that you can't please everybody. You can't, man. I was honestly on the, on, on the way up here, I was thinking, I was just thinking to myself, and I was thinking, like, you know, I'm just going to stop being, you know, not, not, not who I am, but, you know, I get a lot of good messages and I get a lot of bad messages. So I read something on Twitter the other day, and it was like, um, a guy's, say a guy standing inside a door, and he sees a bunch of snakes coming at him, and a couple of the snakes are good snakes, but a couple of them are bad ones. Is he going to open the door and then let a bunch of them in, or is he just going to shut the door? Because you never know which one is which. Mm -hmm. So from now on, you know, I'm just, I feel like I'll see the nice comments and the nice messages. I'm just not going to, you know, I'm just not going to hear any, any talk from right. it, whether it's negative or positive. Right. Just, I mean, that's just the way it has to be. Does that make you happier doing it that way? Um, it doesn't initially because I know that there's a lot of good ones out there. There's a lot of kids that look up to me. But do um, you guys like, do you think LeBron reads all his messages? Heck no, man. And they're probably kids that would die to see him. Mm -hmm. He probably doesn't even think about it. Right. So right. that's what I got to do. Yeah. Well, and that's one thing I feel like that you've, you're starting to do more and more of is just find happiness, man. Mm -hmm. You know, like that's, and the road to happiness, it's not for every, it's not for one, it's not for everybody. Two, like you're going to have to, your circle's going to get smaller and smaller and 
as you go on and you're you're pretty much 10 years younger than me and it, it, i'm i can't I, I wish i had that when i was your age you know and i wish more kids would find that you know because the pressure that social media puts on kids not just twitter but the instagram the tiktok the, all the fun stuff you know i mean there's just so much pressure so much you know and for for you to you know to mature from that and and deal with it the way you do man it's that's awesome yeah, i wish more people you. were able to do that thank you appreciate you know it. So, uh, give me, so let's say we have a game day, give me a, like a, uh, a game day routine. Uh, let's say you have like, what are you doing for, uh, like, what are you eating before a game? What are you eating after a game? All that fun stuff, man. Um, before the game, I'm, you know, probably when I wake up in the morning, you know, I probably have a good breakfast. My stepdad is usually really good at making breakfast in the morning, whether it's pancakes, bacon, whatever, whatever the case may be. Right. Um, I'll go to school. I won't eat the school lunch. I usually don't Why eat the school lunch. I just don't feel like it's... I mean, maybe it's good for me to get some food in my body, but I've just never been a fan of it. I kind of just walk around the halls. You can be honest, man. That stuff's nasty. Yeah, yeah it's not good at all. That's not good, man. Yeah, not good at all. And then, you know, before the game, I'll get Subway. I usually get Subway before every game. Good for you, man. And maybe get, like, a protein bar and yeah. something like that. Yeah, you get those, you get those fruits and veggies, right? Yeah. Better, Sometimes. Man. Sometimes. Sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes. Uh, that's funny. I'm allergic to bananas, so... Are you really? Yeah. Are you allergic to anything else or just... Or is, or is, there, is there anything, like, you prefer to eat, prefer not to eat? I prefer, you know, something with a lot of carbs. Do you? A lot of carbs. Um, I like protein drinks, but I don't eat a lot of food that has protein in it. I like protein drinks. What kind of protein drinks do you have? Uh, you know the you know the usually, brand. I mean, Muscle Milk, the okay. Pro Series. I feel that's better for athletes. Mm -hmm. But that's about it. Right. Well, the well, reason why I ask that is I think uh, you mentioned Muscle Milk, and that's one thing I preach to so many kids, and I'm sure your brothers told you this: is when you go to college, whether it's D1 or whatever it is, you are limited to a certain amount of supplements that you have to take. Yeah. So that's what we call NSF certified products. Basically, meaning you take them, they're they're basically guaranteed to not have you test positive for something that's banned for sure or whatever just through the processing and all that fun stuff um so again the fact that you know that now at your age is so key because there's kids that will go to gnc and i don't want to hate on gnc but man like they're trying to sell their own stuff and it's like walking to like a literally like a drug dealer store it's an hurt your body yeah you know and so it's just part of just learning and it's just a part of it's just all part of a developmental process i feel like you know uh, so let's talk about goal setting. You seem like you got a lot of goals. You got things. Do you do you sit there and write them down? You type them on your phone. How do you go about it? Um, you know, I, re I really, I think I wrote some when I was like in middle school and like elementary school. Like, oh, I know they were dreams back then. Mm -hmm. You know, you're younger. What do you what do you dream that you want to be? Like, what are your dreams? You know, obviously I want to go to the NBA. That's what right. I said when I was younger and stuff like that. I want to be a doctor. I want to be rich. Want, stuff like that. But as I got older, it became reality. Right. You know, it became not a dream but a goal because mm -hmm. I know I can achieve it. Right. Dreams are something you just see. Right. Okay. So again, to the NBA, is something I know I can do. No, yeah, definitely. And I wouldn't believe that if I if I wasn't confident in myself, <laughs> people that were that were in the NBA right now, without them telling me that, I mean. It's just, it's just a whole, it's just all confidence. Right. So. Right. Ben, do we have any questions coming at all? We do. We have 25 viewers. Oh, heck yeah. That's awesome. Appreciate you guys watching, tuning in. Um, one thing uh, I want you to use this platform is to voice your opinion about anything that's on your mind. Do you have anything that's on your mind that you want to say? You, you want to let people to know? Um, I don't really, you know, nothing that I really want people to know. It's more of just like, me just talking for me to you mm -hmm. like life is definitely changed in my from my perspective you know when I was younger I was was taught to be respectful and stuff like that and treat people with the highest manner right and when I was younger I never I would never picture me being in the position I am and that's good and bad because I never pictured people hating me when I was younger right I never thought that I would get to a point where People can't stand to see me. People can't stand to see me play. Which is so fascinating. I just don't understand why. And like, I follow you and I follow your stuff and I just, I don't get it. I, I mean, but at the same time, you can't take it personal. You can't. You can't. And you just can't. Because, did you at first? Uh, I did sometimes, you know, yeah. I would respond to people on social media and stuff like that, but right. that's what they want. That's exactly what they want. They that's want a reaction. They want, they want a reaction. And right. that kind of boosts their that boosts their confidence. That means that they're gonna do it again until they don't get a reaction out of you. Right. I learned that. And so why even bother why even bother arguing with somebody that if if you're their main focus of their day, then they have something going on with their day. Definitely. They got there's a there's a bigger underlying problem within mm -hmm. themselves. Yeah. 
You put on you. So for if you, is there any, do you have any tips or advice for somebody who might deal with that in the future? You know, it's just um, you know, just block it out, ignore it. Right. You know, it gets to a point where it's hard to ignore, especially when people are in your face. Yeah, I was going to say, it's probably easier said than done. It's way easier said than done. Right. And I've learned that because, you know, people say, oh, I'll turn the other cheek. Well, you turn that cheek and there's somebody else right there. Right. And it's not always green on the other side because social media is such a big impact nowadays. Mm-hmm. Such a big impact. And people will use that to, you know, to bash you and to, to, you know, to embarrass you, mm-hmm. stuff like that. You know, yesterday at the game, the whole student section pulled up my TikTok videos. Mm-hmm. They were just like, oh, look at this TikTok. Like, come on, I'm doing this for fun. You think I'm <laughs> seriously doing this? Right, right. You know, if you're taking the time to look up my account, click on my stuff and show it, you got to be bored. Right. What were you saying, Ben? Uh, we have our first question. Okay. Uh, Nathan asks, who do you look up to the most? Probably my brother. Can you, can you tell everybody who your brother is? For those brother is Bryson Williams. He uh, played football at Lincoln Southeast. Now he plays uh, defensive tackle at the University of Wisconsin. He's a sophomore. Mm-hmm. And um, the main reason is just because I see how hard he worked. Mm-hmm. You know, obviously my mom works hard and my stepdad does, my dad does, but I don't get to see that because they're at work. Did he deal with as much stuff as you did in regards no. to, like, why is that, you think? Because he's a, he's a, you know, he's a, he's a very loving guy. You know, right. he's... Probably the most popular kid at his school. People love him. Right. You know, he's just a funny, loving guy. Like people, like he's a guy that you want your kid to be. Right. And I'm not saying I'm not. Right. But, you know, he's he's just very easy to talk to, easy to you know be around. You know, he walks in a room, you can just tell instantly he just shines the room because right. his positivity he brings is just like that. Right. And not that I'm negative all the time and stuff like that, but I'm just not. I'm just not as you know. Outgoing, t- outgoing. Or, you know, I'm really laid back, right? And I'm really to myself because I've learned that at the end of the day, it's me. Mm-hmm. You know, when you die, when you die, you're in the coffin by yourself. So That's true. I'm by myself, really. Yeah. And people are out to get me. Well, well, the thing is too is I'm sure when he was on the field, I never saw any. I saw, I never saw him play personally, but I'm sure when he was on the field, he was a whole different person. And I think that's probably the same thing with you. Yeah. Like, you're a different person on the court exactly. than when you are, like, in here with me right now. That's the biggest factor part all day. And people don't understand that, you know? Like, you have to, like, we, I mean, we can we can sit here and preach it till we're blue in the face, but who you are on the court is who you are on the court. Who you are as a person is completely, completely different. different. Completely different. I mean, on the football field, he was an animal. Right. He would try to take your head off. Right. And you could be his best friend. Which he better. I mean, (laughs) that's what he does. I mean, he's a defensive tackle, man. You could be his best friend. You know, try to take your head off and not think about it, not think about it anymore. Right. You know, and that's how I am. You know, I'm trying to kill. Right. And that's just the way I was raised. That's the way that I know that that you can be successful. Right. You know, you can't care about what other people think. I can't, man. Is there another one or is that that the only one? Cool. Um, Any last minute tips or advice for anybody, man? You know, um, any, you know, upcoming recruits or basketball, you know, stars or any blue chip athletes that are coming up, just re- I really want you guys to realize, and you probably heard it a hundred times, but the process from going to high school to college is a business. Mm-hmm. We talked about earlier. Yeah. It's a business. Your name is a brand. And I'll come back to it, but my name is a brand, so in public, I'm going to carry myself to the highest manner, which I do. Definitely. You know, I've never turned down an autograph. I've never turned down a picture. Good for you, man. And like I told him earlier, there was a four-year-old, probably three- or four-year-old kid yelling at me the other day in my game. Probably hates me to death, but little does he know, I would take time out of my day to shake his hand, to take a picture with him, even whatever he said was said. I, right. I just don't care. I'm that type of guy. Right. I don't hold grudges. Right. So, you know, you're marketing yourself. Well, I think, and that's one thing I've noticed just sitting down with you even before this was how the humility you bring to the table, even even at the level of success that you are seeing now and that I know you'll see in the future, you know. Um, a, lot, a lot of people, you know, and some people may argue that you aren't humble because they're just seeing what they see on social media, but I'm telling you, man, like, the humility and you know putting kindness first is always going to win and I feel like that's what you do no matter what for sure you know from my point of view I believe I'm humble you know you don't see me out here on social media saying what I'm going to do or what I did it's um if I do it's just it's a fact right if I say I'm going to do it I'm going to do it right I'm not trying to brag it's just my God given abilities and I'm using that to the fullest right you know 
People who aren't as confident in themselves say that a person that's confident is cocky. And yeah, there, there's, there's a difference. So it's much different. You know, like for example, and I saw this photo that was floating around uh, around like the, like the New Year 2020 deal was, it was a tweet from Travis Scott back in like 2011. I don't know if you ever saw it, but he basically said in the tweet, and don't quote me on this, but it said something like, in 10 years, you're gonna know the name Travis Scott. Look where we are. Yeah, it's just you confidence. Know, you know, it's just a confidence deal. You know, I mean, if you don't believe in yourself, nobody will. Yeah, hundred percent, man. Nobody. You're right. And yeah, I mean, like I said, it's it, the college. You know, the whole experience is the business. You know, yeah. I'm not going to get into it too, too too much of the stuff that I went through in Nebraska, but I mean that that right there showed me that it's it's much bigger than you. You're an investment. You're an investment. Right, especially at the at the and not to put anybody else aside, but at the more of the higher level, it becomes an even more an investment. Mm -hmm. I see it as small business into big business. Big. You know, like the NAI, JUCO, D3, they're more of the small business, the more the bigger D2s, the, some of the even big time JUCOs and even the D1s, they're the big business, man. Yeah, your price tag. You know, <laughs> and like a lot of people, and I've put some of this before, a lot of people give grief to kids who, oh, I got this offer, I got this offer, and what they're what they don't understand is what they're doing is they're building their own personal brand mm -hmm. you know which you know and and other coaches are going to see that like oh shit that kid got an offer okay well we want that kid so we better hop on it you not know? even knowing anything about you no nothing at all <laughs> you know and it's not and again it's just personal personal brand building because if they don't play the sports for those next four years well then what about after the rest yeah. of their lives yeah and that's 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 a big Thing with me from the university, right. you know, where will I be at in 20 years? I'm not committing to a school for four years. Right. Whether I go to the NBA in two, three, four, even one, maybe. It's what I'm doing after that. Right. And, you know, I probably could have succeeded in Nebraska for the next 20 years if I'd have stayed here. But would I be happy? No. Right. You got to find happiness, man. That's what it's about. And that's what it came down to. Would I be happy? And the answer was no. Right. And, um, you know, I learned a lot from that whole process. I learned that everybody's not your friend. You know, I'm not going to say any names, but the same coaches that I was, you know, dapping up and talking to every day from Nebraska, I've never, I haven't spoken to since. Right. Yeah, man. I mean, that's, it's the same thing with business. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, there's, there's clients who I've worked with, you know, and whether I changed or what, and I thought they were close to me and they haven't talked to me since. That's life. I mean, I lost 700 followers after I decommitted. Right. 700. Right. And like, <laughs> and I'm sure that you're the same way with me. Like, I don't give a shit if anybody follows me or likes my stuff. Like no. I have, whenever I post something, I have zero expectation. No. I'm I was doing I it just, just to put it out there. I wish I could just turn off my comments. I would, but then I obviously I don't want to block everybody out. Right. But, right. you know, it's exactly what you said. Right. I think, I think it's good though, because it'll give you perspective. Mm -hmm. Perspective. And I don't mean that as in, you know, I never want to, I've never been the type of guy to feel like somebody owes me something. Right. You know, that's, that's the wrong way to feel because then you feel like you need sympathy Definitely. for everything you go through. If I lose a game, I don't need sympathy. Right. You know, I got to self-reflect. Right. Look myself in the mirror and say, what did I do wrong? And fix it. Well, we were talking about that, uh, yes, actually yesterday on the G-Code with uh, Taylor Edwards, but one of my favorite quotes I've ever, I've ever heard or read or whatever was, even when I lose, I win. Facts. You know, it's the truth. You know, like, yeah, you lost. But what can I gain from that so that way I can move on from that point so that, may, that way it may not happen again? Mm -hmm. It's not, And that's not just in sports. That's in business or life. Yeah. I mean, that, that, I mean, that's just, that's just the life we live in. Yeah. That, that's, that's what today's world is. And, you know, you're not going to be an exception. You know, nobody's going to change, change their ways for you. Mm -hmm. you just got to do it. Right. Cool, man. Well, I appreciate you hopping on, brother. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. Thanks, guys.